Hi everybody, this is Marty Rizmanath from WordPress Direct, and I'm going to show you how WordPress Direct will help you either transfer that new blog once if you decide to sell it, for instance, or if you decide you want to stay in the market and you're going to uh, populate with multiple blogs, how you would use WordPress Direct to help you with both of those tasks. So with that, let's get going. Now, if you decide to sell your blog, we suggest that you list your blog as self-maintaining to increase the value. You can do this if you have one of the paid WordPress Direct accounts. Um, what this means is, in your blog, you can set up the content posting software that we have not talked about yet, and use that to tell the new owner that um, the blog can update itself with relevant content the reason this increases the value of the blog for a new owner is somebody buying a website wants to do as little as possible to keep the website going and by using the content publishing portion of WordPress Direct you can essentially put the blog on autopilot um, so that it will uh, post relevant content and um, uh, typically keep its ranking in Google with a minimum of intervention from whoever is uh, the owner of the blog um, if you're going to then do that, you're going to transfer the blog to the new owner using uh, the website settings under Advanced Settings Migration, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, first, let's show you how to transfer the blog, and to do that, you're going to go into your WordPress Direct account, you're going to click Website Settings, and then in the Website Settings, you scroll all the way down to the bottom, and you'll see these Advanced Settings. When you open that up, at the, at the, uh, the last option is Hosting Migration. And uh, the Hosting Migration allows you to do two things. First, um, you can move your website to a different hosting account. Uh, for instance, if you sell your blog to somebody else, you can move it to one of their hosting accounts. All they have to do is give you the details of the hosting account and you can transfer it for them. Um, that's a nice feature when you're when you're offering to sell somebody your blog. The other thing you can do is you can decide to keep your blog, and let's talk about that option for a second. If you keep your blog, you can expand your blog coverage by putting multiple blogs in a market and putting different keywords on each. Now you can either use install new website in WordPress Direct to make multiple blogs. If you have one that's fairly close and you want to just um, start with a couple keywords from the existing blog and add a few, you can use the clone website uh, option in the migration transfer tool to clone your um, your blog to a different domain name. Right, that's one use. The use we're talking about here is if you're going to transfer it to a new owner, you would uh, pick migrate hosts, meaning keep same URL. That's I'm going to the same domain name. We're going to transfer the domain to somebody else, and we're going to transfer the blog to them too. Once um, you uh, choose the migrate host option you'll have to enter the IP address of their um, hosting account and the uh, the FTP details and then you click this initiate website migration and that will move your blog that you've sold or for whatever reason want to transfer to a different host from your hosting account to the new hosting account okay so that's how you accomplish that all right, we've made an improvement this year um, to help troubleshoot uh, people's transfers of sites um, since we're really relying on it uh, for people completing sales in Flippa. Um, so what we've done is we've added a step for you to tell us whether the transfer succeeds or fails um, so that we can help you with it in case it fails. What we do now is we send you an email, and so you need to find the email that WPD sends you and choose whether the mig migration succeeds or fails. Um, there's a preview. I'm going to show you a little bit about that when I show you what the email looks like. You need to complete this review uh, to finish the transfer. What in the in while the transfer is in progress, you're actually going to have two entries for this website at each location. Depending on how you complete uh, which which link you choose, one of those entries will get removed. And if the uh, if this process fails, then what'll happen is this will restore everything back to the way it was before you started the migration. Um, one note too is that there is no name server pointing uh, to the new server where you've transferred the site to until the very end of the process after you've told us the migration is successful. And uh, also, 
when you are selling a site, you'll have to actually um, transfer the site and then transfer the domain to the new owner. So it's kind of like in this order. You want to actually do the migration, then find the email and choose the link, then you do the name server pointing, then you transfer the domain to the new owner. That'll make it the, the smoothest process for the new owner. Here's what that email looks like. Uh, it's pretty short and sweet. It just says that the migration of your website's complete. There is a preview function here. Check this before updating DNS. When you click this, it is going to take you to your site on the new server, uh, and you will be able to see what the site looks like However, before the uh, name server propagation is done, some of your plugins aren't going to work. Um, specifically, uh, Twitter feeds and other things are not going to be updating on your new site until the transfer is actually complete. So as long as the site looks okay, don't worry about stuff like that. Um, we're just making sure the layout's there and that the, and the, the, the thing looks fine. But let's also talk about now, when you list the blog for sale, talking about making it self-maintaining. The way that you do that is um, in your uh, WordPress direct account, you go to manage content software. And what you'll find is that you have a number of different tools that allow you to hook your blog up to different content sources. Uh, the top one uh, hooks your blog up to Yahoo Answers, and you can find um, questions and answers that relate to your keywords and have them automatically posted to your blog. Um, the other is uh, YouTube to WordPress. This finds related YouTube videos and will post them to your blog. And then there's other ones that allow you to um, submit RSS feeds, um, uh, find uh, related products on Yahoo Shopping, and then PLR Poster, which is for private label rights content. Now, some of these are only available um, in silver, gold, and platinum accounts. Um, the first three are available in all the paid accounts and all of this content software is only available in the paid accounts. If you only have a free account then you don't have access to this content software. But one of these, what this is really good for is um, making the new owner or whoever you are uh, listing the blog with aware that um, they will not have to maintain the blog um, if they choose to buy it from you, if they don't want to. Um, they can simply have uh, these content posters post some related content to the blog intermittently um, at intervals determined by you or the new owner. Um, this will generally increase the value of the blog so you get a higher sales price. Um, what you would do to install the software is click the install software link. Um, you will have to set a password that you use to um, um, interact with the administration panel for the software in the future. I'm just going to use the word demo. And then we're going to install this software. Now I'm not going to actually show you how to use the, uh, the posting software in this video. Um, if you are a WordPress Direct um, member, then you will receive a separate video from me that shows you something about this content posting software. Um, but at least you know where to find it and how to install it. You never have to enter any license details. Um, it will uh, figure it out for you. Uh, automatically um, and uh, it will, once you install the software it's not going to do anything yet until you tell it to do something so enabling the software will have no effect on your blog unless you go through um, uh, setting up some settings to actually post some content to your blog and I again will show you that in a in a separate video coming directly from me at WordPress Direct. Alright so now um, let's talk about yet another piece here which is if you decide to keep your blog um, expanding your blog coverage to multiple blogs in a market. Why would you want to do this? Well, you know, people, once they get a blog up with uh, three, four, five keywords, say, well, why don't I put 50 keywords on the blog? And while one of the things you want to do for maintaining a focus on traffic in an account is um, uh, not to have too many keywords on your blog. You want to keep the keyword focus as tight as possible so that Google will rank it for a for a small number of keywords so that you don't def you, you don't make your keyword base for the blog too diffuse at which point a blog that's more highly focused could displace you in the ranking. So let's talk about what you do to manage multiple blogs in a market. Um, we recommend you want to put five to ten keyword phrases per blog. So if you're gonna have fifty you would probably want five blogs with 10 keywords each, 
or maybe six blogs with eight or nine keywords each. Um, it's really, there's no hard, fast rule, but you want to keep the keywords uh, in a low number so that you don't diffuse the focus of the blog. Now, once you use WordPress Direct this way, this is what I'm calling hyperblogging. This means managing sets of blogs with WordPress Direct in a market. And I'm going to show you why this saves you a whole bunch of headaches. Now, um, those of you who were in the 30-day challenge last year might have set up some blogs in a market, and you realize that last year we were installing WordPress 2.5.1. And if you went through my last video on day six of the 30-day challenge, I walked you through how to upgrade your blogs from old versions of WordPress to newer versions of WordPress. And during that video, you might have seen that um, version 2.5 of Word, uh, WP Admin, the, uh, the WordPress interface, looks quite a bit different than version 2.7 of the WP Admin interface. There is quite a uh, frequent number of upgrades with WordPress, and if you have been installing blogs in a market over the past year, you will find that if you're going having to go into WP Admin for every blog, in a market that you've set up over the course of say six months or a year is going to drive you nuts and the reason is your WP admins on all those different blogs are going to look different and you have to make sure that all of the plugins are the same across all of those blogs and all of the versions of the plugins are correct and that you don't uh, have any interactions because you have the wrong version of plugin on the blog this is what I mean by hyperblogging. The whole point with WPD is that it saves you a whole lot of headache when you start having lots and lots of blogs to cover one or more markets. Now, of course, when you've got one blog, um, doing it in WordPress or doing it in WordPress Direct doesn't look that different. It's when you have many blogs, really, that this really saves you a whole lot of headache by having by getting rid of all of those technical issues and giving you one common interface across a whole lot of different blogs so that you only have to interface um, one way with all the different blogs that you have. And of course, the posting content feature that I just talked to you about also applies when you're trying to keep many, many different blogs up to date and you have a limited number of your own content that you've written. And so in between your champagne content, you're going to put um, some uh, videos or answers or other things that are coming from the content posting software of WordPress Direct so that it stretches your uniquely written content a lot further across all of the different blogs that you might have in one market. So one of the things that you'll see is one of the niches we're in is uh, cosmetic dentistry and uh, this also encompasses stuff like teeth whitening and you know we can go in here and check our stats across multiple blogs uh, all, uh, all the same way manage content all the same way um, deal with our ads and banners all the same way we don't have to think about what version of WordPress we used and when we did it and you know you can go and and very easily look at all the different um, blogs that we have in a market um, the other thing, too, that um, we don't really get into in the challenge is that on some of these higher level accounts, these have uh, multi-user access. So once you get to the point where you really start making a business out of this and you might have um, 20, 30, 40 blogs and you're actually generating enough income to uh, possibly outsource some things or hire people, that allows um, people to access your WordPress direct account. Um, and not necessarily do everything. Some people might only be able to post or, or uh, add a banner or, or do things like that just to uh, allow you to divide up the work in managing all of the different blogs that you have uh, that are marketing within uh, a set of niches on uh, whatever uh, it is you're trying to promote. So hopefully that gives you an idea of uh, what this no go or go decision for you means about whether you keep your blog and expand your uh, base in a niche or a, uh, a, a segment of the market uh, for a particular product or whether you sell it and, and how you might list it and advertise it um, to gain the most from the work that you put into your blog on WordPress Direct. Uh, thanks so much. I uh, hope you've had great luck with the challenge and uh, look forward to um, seeing you on the forums.